First off, right away, I want to assure you that there are no spoilers in this video. I know sometimes you guys feel I slip them in there, but there are no spoilers in this video. So why am I making it? What are we going to discuss? Well, I made this video, I made it today because I wanted to see the Black Widow press conference, which just ended. But I made this video because when the social media embargo lifted yesterday, and there was a largely positive response, largely, we're going to talk about that. A big question that a number of you had for me was, well, Grace, I'm glad that you have something positive to say about Black Widow, but is this Wonder Woman 1984 all over again, where the initial reactions are really strong, and then we just descend into hell? I think that's a valid question. So that's what this video is going to basically address. And I think it's not only a valid question, but an interesting question about female-led actioners and what the situation is. And I think, I think there is a way around it. I think there is. But only if Hollywood starts to pay attention. But we're going to pay attention! So this is just the beginning of the Black Widow conversation, which now spans three weeks because Disney started the conversation ridiculously early. At the end of the video, I'll also tell you why they did that. Um, and I know it's frustrating for many of you. You're like, why are we talking about Black Widow now? The movie doesn't come out until, well, July 7th in some major countries. So mark your calendar for spoilers. And also I'm under embargo, but other reviewers, uh, you know, people who've seen the movie as early as I have, they're breaking embargo. Some of them really fla uh, like uh, uh, aggressively, like, wow. Uh, and a picture of the movie is starting to emerge this early. And I think people are testing the waters for negativity. You know, the people who've seen the movie. I think they're, you can see it on the edges. People kind of like, you know, because it's Marvel. And, you know, historically, no one's ever had anything bad to say about Marvel. So I think you see it right now on the edges. People are trying it out, floating it out there. And I think that now that I, because I've seen the movie, I think that the negative momentum is only going to grow over the course of the next three weeks and the weekend that the film opens, and probably the week after. I mean, not just because people are harder on female-led action movies, uh, and I think a lot of people have been just waiting for Marvel to slip up, just waiting for it. And I don't know why Kevin Feige gave them the opportunity. But anyway, uh, I think phase four is gonna be a wild roller coaster. But also because the movie, to be fair, does warrant some criticism. And we're seeing a pattern emerge, especially with female-led action movies, that people are quick to highlight. This is important. People are quick to highlight what the films get wrong and don't really bother to highlight what the films get right. And that's, that's sad to me, but I mean, you know, the world is sad. Life is tough. And this is just the situation that we're dealing with. That caught almost everyone by surprise with Wonder Woman 1984. It's like, yeah, the movie had problems. I knew the first minute I saw it that the lack of action was going to be a problem for that movie. But I thought people would recognize what the movie did really well. And that was captured the more peaceful side of Wonder Woman in the comics. We had that conversation and it was brutal. <laughs> so for those of you who are worried, are we going to go through this again with Black Widow? I don't think it will be as bad as Wonder Woman 1984. There isn't anything along the lines of what happened to Steve Trevor, which I felt was problematic, very, you know, very problematic and, you know, hypocritical because if it hadn't been done to a female character, people would have been up in arms. But I didn't think it would torpedo the movie, but there's nothing like that here. Uh, and again, it's Marvel, which has an extremely loyal and united. That is key. DC fractures its fandom by fracturing its versions of the character. So it doesn't have that united front. But Marvel has that. They have a loyal, united, and mobilized fan base. So I think that's going to help them as, as well. I think that the Black Widow reaction, when it hits, I feel like I'm giving a weather report, batten down the hatches, I think that will be more along the lines of Birds of Prey and Captain Marvel, somewhere in the middle there. Uh, and because again, now that I've seen it, like where would it have landed box office wise if it hadn't been a pandemic? Would it have been a billion dollar picture? No way, now that I've seen the movie. No way would it have been a billion dollar picture. But I don't think it would have been as big a flop as Birds of Prey. I would have pegged it at around 600 million, around Doctor Strange and Ant-Man and the Wasp. That's where I think it would have been. Why not as successful as Captain Marvel, which overcame, which it did overcome its negativity to make a billion dollars at the box office. Uh, and Captain Marvel has a very strong rewatchability factor. Uh, maybe Black Widow does too. I've only seen it once and I'm pla I have plans to see it again. I can't, I'm excited to see it again. Um, Captain Marvel, as we all know, benefited 
from an MCU-starved audience. It had been about a year since Ant-Man and the Wasp, which, you know, had not been very f fulfilling. I know some of you love to defend that movie. It was not quite great. It was really mediocre. Um, and also, Captain Marvel was an Avengers Endgame appetizer. And they had told us that it was going to really play into the movie. It didn't really. But, you know, everybody thought that was the case. And people were just excited about Endgame coming. And so I think that really, it was like a party. Now, we are, we have had another MCU break as well because of the pandemic. But Disney Plus has had us eating good when it comes to Marvel for three shows now. And in fact, Loki will still be releasing when Black Widow comes out. So Black Widow will not be your only source of MCU entertainment. So I don't think Black Widow ever would have made a billion dollars, even if it had come out before all the Disney Plus shows. I still would peg it in the 600 million range, to be honest with you. That's where I would peg it. Maybe a little better because it's Marvel, but that's where I would put it. Also, Captain Marvel benefited from introducing a very important new character and a very powerful new character. And I will say that that is the best thing about Black Widow, and that is the introduction of Yelena Belova, who is fantastic. This is Florence Pugh's movie, pew, 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 and she carries it. She's phenomenal. She's so good. We'll talk about her when we can finally talk about the movie. So what about Natasha? I think you guys were right that it was very generous of Scarlett Johansson to have such a wonderful role for Florence Pugh right next to her, right? She could have demanded that the spotlight be on her. Maybe she should have a little more. Because I think that Natasha fans, who are already upset about the idea of having a new Black Widow, they won't feel satisfied. Speaking of eating good, I don't think people are going to feel full up on Natasha at the end of this movie. So thank goodness that in today's press conference, which was real light on information, but Kevin Feige did talk about the fact that knowing so little about Natasha's life was what opened the door to doing this like kind of prequel situation. And so I think that he was clearly indicating that if they wanted to tell more stories about Natasha Romanoff, because maybe this movie does somehow become a huge hit, well then you could revisit, you could visit other parts of her past, which is great, which I think, you know, I think we would all be fine with. Also, Kevin Feige said that the door is open to explore the past, present, and future of all MCU characters, which I thought was pretty nifty, particularly that future part. I would love that. Now back to Black Widow, without spoilers, why do I think there will be some blowback? You don't worry, I know you might be like, how are you gonna do this without spoilers? I wanna do it without spoilers. Well, the movie makes some really strong choices that once again, I really liked. I was like, that's really clever. But I understand, even more so now that I saw what happened with Wonder Woman 1984, that the movie doesn't execute them well enough to sell them to the large majority of fans who would understandably need a lot of convincing to accept changes this striking. And while again, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna be another Wonder Woman 1984 situation, I do think that what happened with Wonder Woman 1984 is changing how these movies are covered. So while it, with you know Wonder Woman 1984, the press and the media and reviewers were focusing on like what the movie got right, I think now we've all learned that many vocal fans care equally, if not more, about what, what the movie gets wrong. So, you know, you're going to see, instead of giving the movie the benefit of the doubt, you're going to, I think you're going to see more of us feeling that we need to warn you about what might happen. So I, I think that's like what's going to, that, I think that since audiences don't want to give the benefit of the doubt to the movies, the press are going to stop doing it, which, you know, it's, you know, again, it's the world that we live in. All right, now, will these fans, for instance, care about the film's amazing commentary on human trafficking? I mean, wait till you see the opening credit sequence for this movie. I, I'm actually, I was so moved. But I don't think the people are gonna care because the movie offers little sugar to help that medicine go down. And it's the movie's responsibility, by the way, to have that sugar. You might be like, well, people should be bigger and rise to appreciate that. But that's not, people are going to see a comic book movie. They're not going to see a drama. That's something Patty Jenkins didn't understand. And that's something I worry that Kate Shortland doesn't understand. Also, with the movie's bold changes to comic book lore, as I said, I really like what they did. But I also understand that they didn't execute those changes successfully enough to sell them to the majority of fans. I mean, I'm kind of sold. I mean, I don't know. I give the benefit of the doubt to this stuff and I, I, I'm nervous that that's what's gonna happen. So I would say medicine to sugar ratio is the Wonder Woman 1984 lesson, is the lesson to take from all these female-led actioners which have suffered. And unfortunately, most of the time we have female filmmakers behind them. And I think they want to intellectualize these movies, put a feminine stamp on the blockbuster. And I think that to be fair, they've introduced some really cool stuff. 
But they forget what made the Russo brothers, who, by the way, built the MCU. And you can feel that in the MCU now that the Russo brothers have moved on. You feel that. I mean, I think Kevin, we, everyone says, you know, Kevin Feige can do no wrong, but I think we're going to realize how important the Russo brothers were to his success. The Russo brothers knew how to dole out the sugar, to dole out the candy piece by piece throughout the course of the entire film. Now, I also want to say when it comes to women directors, they're doing great things on streaming. So I'm not quite sure why it's working there and not in movies. It might be the extra running time. It might be there because they have female directors have so much more time to introduce the character development that they want to, but then also there's still time to do the world building and the action that fans really want to see. And fans have still even been a little disappointed in the shows. Um, feeling they weren't getting enough. So this is something that I hope this is a note that, comic, that all franchises are taking. Basically, I will tell you the first act of this film is really different, unique, and thrilling. Great action. I really appreciated it. The second act is pretty standard. Lots of talking. Like, a lot of talking. Like, I was like, it's too much talking. And then the third act is sadly a CGI mess. And what do I always tell you? It's how the movie ends that's going to color how people see it when they remember, when they think back to it. And so it's, that's not the place to mess up in the third act. Uh, and there is an end credit scene, but it's not amazing enough to make people forget the things that maybe they won't care for with the movie. So we'll see. So finally, why is Disney starting this conversation so early? Well, it's because they're releasing this film right after the 4th of July. And most of the American press and the cast and the industry will be on vacation. I mean, you might be like, that's just one country, man. Well, it's the biggest or second biggest box office in the world. And everyone who runs the junket, all the representation for the talent, all these people want to go on their 4th of July vacation. So the screenings, the interviews, the press conference, and the reviews need to be all written up and published. And people need to be around to read and watch that coverage because you guys are going to go, uh, the large majority of the audience is going to go on vacation as well before the holiday window takes everyone offline. So that's why you're seeing it happen so early. That's why that's a tough release date. And I hope we'll see for Black Panther, which is going to have the same situation next year, Black Panther 2, I hope maybe they're like, um, you know, Maybe we started the conversation too early. Although, Black Panther 2 is going to be so good. Now, as for the release of this movie, I'm going to walk you through the schedule so that you can prepare yourself mentally and online on how to avoid spoilers. So this movie actually hit several big countries two days early on July 7th. I'm talking the UK and Hong Kong. Big social media centers. So spoilers are going to explode online. Then the movie hits theaters in the United States and North America that are open, uh, and most theaters are at this point, Thursday night. And then on Disney Plus, it'll be available the next day. And all bets are off when it hits the streaming service. And people will want to talk about this movie and largely about what it gets wrong because it's so striking. And what it gets right, the movie gets a lot right. But what it gets right is very subtle. And that's, that's again, another lesson of Wonder Woman 1984. You know, you just can't be subtle with the good stuff. But again, we'll see. We'll see what the Marvel effect is. This is a great test. Um, as audiences are usually kinder to them. But they weren't kind to Cap... I think that there is definitely a contingent of the online commentary that's going to go hard after this movie. I'm not looking forward to it. I feel bad about it. I don't think it's totally fair. So that's unfortunate. And I think that it's... A, again, this is the reality of female-led actioners that they're under a, a larger, harsher microscope. And I think that it's something that these movies need to start understanding and they need to work to outmaneuver it. Uh, Cause it's, you know, you can write it off as toxic fans and in some cases it is toxic fans, but they're still there. There is nothing you can do about it. They're not gonna go away. And I'm beginning to see something emerge. I'm beginning to see a pattern emerge of ways to get around this. Like all these movies were made at the same time so they couldn't learn from each other's mistakes. Even though Black Widow is coming out much later, it's because it was delayed. I can see the I can see it starting to emerge as to how to get around this, and we will definitely be discussing that once Black Widow is released. So, and discussing the movie in in in, in general. So, good luck out there avoiding spoilers. It's going to be rough. Three weeks is a long time, uh, and so that's my early discussion of uh, Black Widow and whether or not it'll suffer the same fate as Wonder Woman 1984. Again, I don't think it will. It'll be somewhere around Birds of Prey and uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, so I'm curious, I'm curious, you know, as you start to see the picture emerge, 
where are you pegging the movie? And what do you think of female-led actioners? Are you starting to see where they're, they're all messing up in the same way? It's really fascinating. And again, we'll discuss that when we get, when we get to the actual release of the film. All right, share those thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.